What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So today guys we're doing part two of our 6.0 power stroke tow build list. So you guys know exactly what you need to make the ultimate 6.0 power stroke tow build. Yes this is my 6.7. We're missing the 6.0 right now but it is going to be coming back guys. Those of you that know just it's MIA at the moment. Update video coming soon. But first guys shameless merch plug t-shirt link down below we have hoodies long sleeves all that at teesprings also available on amazon although the teespring website does have a lot more to offer than i currently have on amazon for a whole bunch of reasons now guys real quick recap on the last one we're going to hit some of the highlights not as much detail but basically getting rid of any plastic piece on your truck is a huge thing for your six liter custom tunes if you're interested that's kind of give or take on a stage one we want to look at exhaust, air intake not needed, potentially an intercooler for reliability reasons, or you could upgrade. So those were some of the big points. Again, I'll put a link down in the comments below if you want to check out the full video. But basically what we addressed in that video was just kind of some of the standard things that are common failure points on the 6.0 while towing. The biggest one really being getting rid of the plastic charge pipe and the intercooler end caps could potentially, that one got an asterisk in the last video. I do at least recommend upgrading to the all metal end caps. That is probably in your best interest while towing. Now, since we just hit on the intercooler on that, on our stage two build, the intercooler upgrade is a requirement. Now there'll be links to either the bank's intercooler setup, which is a really nice setup. It is a premium option, but when you figure a nice set of intercooler pipes, I'm not talking about the cheap Chinese ones you get on eBay or on even some of the Amazon stuff. But I'm talking about nice like No Limit Fab, MBRP, SoCal Billet, some of these higher end ones. When you combine the price of that with even a CSF 6028 intercooler, which is my recommended upgrade, or at least they're 60, I think it's 13 or 18. I'll drop a link down below for you guys. But basically getting an upgraded intercooler with those pipes comes out to oh, basically the same, if not more in some situations, as the just buying the Banks kit, except in the Banks you get it all in one shot. At this stage of the game, we're definitely gonna have custom tuning in because we're gonna be upgrading injectors and our turbo along with some other stuff at this point. So I do think studs are recommended at this point. So in this one, we're gonna do a stage two and kind of like a stage 2.5 because while I wouldn't consider it quite what I have planned for a stage three build, which will be the final tow series before we get into our street build six liters. So anyway, what I would really consider for a stage two, we're gonna be getting into a lot of airflow modifications. Those of you guys that have been with the channel since the start know I really harped on optimizing airflow through the engine without putting strain on the system, meaning just slapping a big charger on there, calling it a day, was a huge improvement. That's why we made sure we had BD exhaust manifolds, ODOG intake. We're gonna get into some of the perks of these things now. So picking up where we left off on the stage one build. So one of the things when we're getting that stud job done, I, rec I encourage you guys to do, it's a great time to look at upgrading your exhaust manifolds. I highly, highly, highly recommend BD exhaust manifolds. They're great, they're affordable, and they're super reliable. I plan to put a set of BD on the 6.7 behind me and I'm already rocking them on my 6.0. A couple cool things about the BD is one, they already have a port for your exhaust temp. So if you're monitoring stuff, I highly recommend to use them. You can use that on the, you can drill and tap the factory one, but honestly the BD ones are nice. They have thicker flanges and they're not gonna warp under some of the extreme heat you can see while towing. So I highly recommend putting that upgrade on your 6.0. While you're doing that part, I also think you should upgrade from the factory Y pipe to the BD Y pipe. It is my favorite overall setup for the 6L. All right guys, so now we have it down. We're definitely upgrading the intercooler in this. CSF 6028 is probably my go-to intercooler reference. There's 6013 or 18, I can't remember what it is, but link down below is my number two. That's more of a factory upgrade. So you'll get that reliability, but it's not any bigger. Whereas the 6028 is what I consider to be substantially bigger. I have a video comparing the two out there. And again, there's always the banks, there's BD diesel, there's a lot of great intercoolers out there. We're definitely looking for some increased cooling capacity from that because this part of the series, we're really gonna harp in airflow on this and getting that charge air temp down as much as we can. We're gonna ignore everyone that says cold air intakes or hot air intakes. Thank you banks for that terrible reference dealing with. Mainly because at a certain point you just need more airflow and if you don't have, there's a bug walking around my camera. Sorry if you guys saw that. Anyway, mainly at a certain point, if you have a bigger charger, you're gonna need more air 
workflow capability and the factory intake in my opinion just doesn't meet that need. Now moving on, so we've upgraded our intercooler piping, we've upgraded our intercooler. The intercooler piping was more of a stage one thing, but if you didn't, definitely for the stage two, you're gonna need to be doing that. Now as we transition into the stage two, I definitely recommend getting head studs installed. Not one at a time, make sure you're getting the cylinder head done correctly. I like Kill Devil Diesel cylinder heads on my builds, but not everybody can necessarily afford that. Make sure you do get your heads O-ringed and have them completely gone through Magnaflux, the whole nine. Do not cheap out in this area or you'll be coming back to it later. And I loosely kind of hinted on this about the air intake. While if you don't upgrade your turbo, I don't think it's necessarily needed, but if you do upgrade your turbo, you're gonna need more airflow. And the only way to really get that guys is to upgrade your air intake. So SMB makes a nice one. No Limit Fab has some cool ones. Whirly Custom Fab, another great company. Just make sure you're not cheaping out on the filter. The rest of it isn't really that big of a deal. Metal, plastic. We're talking about towing guys. We're not talking about down the drag strip. So you're gonna get a heat soaked engine bay having plastic or metal isn't really gonna affect that much when you've been cruising down the interstate for the last five hours. So now we've had head studs installed. We have all metal intercooler piping. We have an upgraded intercooler. We have an upgraded air filter. Next guys, exhaust manifolds and Y pipe. While the Y pipe itself is necessarily a definite to do, I do really like the BD Y pipe. I use it on my builds and it's just a super nice setup. The airflow has a really smooth path into the turbo helping minimize lag and prevent turbulence in the air. So I really like how they transition it. Big, big fan of their Y pipe, but their exhaust manifolds are even more impressive in my book. You get a very thick flange, great flowing. They already come pre-tapped for that exhaust probe we're running. So we wanna make sure we're keeping an eye on our EGTs in the process. Now guys, we're gonna talk about one of my absolute favorite mods I've done to my truck, and that is the O-Dog S3R intake manifold. There is an S2R. My sister's bugging me. So anyway, before my sister interrupted me, we were talking about the O-Dog ported intake manifold. There's the S2R and S3R. Uh, check out his website if you need to tell what the difference between the two are. Essentially, they're gonna give you all but identical flow, but one's more of a race purpose thing, and one is much more of a California friendly thing. That's my annoying neighbor going by. I don't like him. Anyway, what that's gonna do is in the early years of six liters guys, and I mean this is after their production, but performance wise, there wasn't a ton of stuff out there. And what a lot, what some guys found out was that the rear cylinders had like a 44% or 20 some percent decrease in airflow from the front cylinders of the engine. So these ported intake manifolds help decrease that difference by, well, these are whole new castings. The very first ported intake manifolds were guys cutting them open, polishing them out, uh, drilling out the bolt posts. So a lot of work went into the beginning ones, but they found that you could get better power, faster spool up in a cleaner burning engine and a more efficient overall running engine with literally just upgrading this piece. And I've been a big fan of it since I've done it on my personal truck. And again, all these airflow mods, guys, these are gonna help bring down our exhaust temps while we're pulling those extended grades or we're towing really heavy and trying to merge onto the highway. These are gonna really help pull those temps down and make them not an issue while you're towing. Now, guys, you have all been very, very patient. Super patient with me because I know there's been guys out there screaming, what about the injectors? And you're gonna be happy to know we're doing injectors and turbos in this, and this is where this really branches on into what I'm saying, like a stage 2.5. We've really, in the initial parts of this, we've addressed all the airflow upgrades we can, short of getting ported cylinder heads, which honestly I do recommend if you can, but that's kind of expensive, so now we're not including it in this part. That'll be a stage three build, which we've basically covered a lot in this so far. The 2.5 is really gonna bridge the gap. So let's start about injectors. We haven't talked much about injectors and a lot of guys find I like a relatively conservative injector. I recommend a 175 body with a stock nozzle. That's gonna give you a really clean burning, well running truck, which kind of helps accent everything we've already done in this build without getting carried away in this portion of it. Now it doesn't mean you can't tow with bigger nozzles, but I wouldn't recommend towing with anything bigger than a 30%. And honestly, I would save that for the next part of this build that we're gonna talk about. Cause you're pulling a lot of fuel 
in most of these scenarios with bigger injectors. So your injector upgrade isn't as big of a deal as a lot of people make it out to be. I do feel it still has value, but it's not top of my priority list. Again, because we're pulling fuel out of it to get the tow tune to begin with. So a 175 stock is my first recommendation. If you need to be a little more on the budget side of things, a 155 stock will do. Again, I do prefer the 175 stock, but a 155 stock is gonna be a great upgrade as well. And last, we've really talked a lot about turbos, so I kind of saved it for last because, oh my gosh, do we talk a lot about turbos. And I don't mind, but I don't want you guys to feel like I'm harping on them all the time. There are two different turbo sizes for this stage of build. Both of them I recommend are coming from Turbo Time USA. There are other options out there, but we're gonna stick with Turbo Time because, well, they help a lot with the channel and make all this happen. So I wanna show some love for my sponsor. Now the first one is gonna be their stage one tow turbo. It's a 61 millimeter with the 10 blade turbine wheel from the Power Max or the early 03 turbos, well, early 04, 03 turbos, that whole thing and they sound fantastic. They have a relatively small compressor wheel, but it is larger than factory. It's of course billet and it's redesigned to give you increased performance. And it's great for people that tow at high altitudes. That's one thing to consider that we didn't really talk about. High altitude guys have unique issues. The 61 millimeter charger, especially with the conservative injector is gonna be a great combination for towing at all altitudes. And that 10 blade turbine wheel I really, really love because it does help you when you gotta pull those grades, especially for you guys again at high altitudes that might be going up and down a lot of hills. It really helps keep your exhaust temps down. And I'm not a huge fan of the 13 blade. For those of you that wanna know where that would do better, at your cruising on flat ground, it'll be spooled up a little more. You can get your tuner to kind of mess with stuff to get a similar performance from your 10 blade while still keeping the top end performance from it. But that's the first turbo I recommend. And the second turbo from these guys is gonna be their 64 millimeter compressor wheel, still with that same 10 blade turbine wheel, give you even more all around performance. Now you will get a little, a tad more lag, not much, but you will get a little more lag on the very bottom end of this, but it spools fast and when it's up and running, it's gonna be a great turbo. You can also get that in their velocity port, which I think is an awesome setup and sounds even better than just the 10 blade by itself. But again, you get, that's more noise under the hood, not out the tailpipe. They are two different sides of this, guys. And also YouTube, if you're gonna be buying one of the Turbo Time USA Turbos, use the discount code 6 Obros link, affiliate link, excuse me, down in the description for them. It will automatically apply the discount. Feel free to use the code anyway, just to make sure it's in there. And that is for 5% off their performance turbos. So that's their stage one up. It won't work on their Power Max or factory replacement turbos, but for those performance ones, which if you're in this part of the build, that's where we're at. It is an excellent, excellent option. And I hope it helps you guys. Again, the channel does benefit from that. So just full disclosure, thank you guys for your support. Now guys, the stage one, I'm gonna say covers 70, 65 to 70 percent of what 60 owners are going to want to do in their build. The stage 2 I feel helps bring that gap up to about 80 percent of what people are going to do and the stage 2.5 really where we got into injectors and turbos is really going to be about 95 percent of what people want to build with their 60 power stroke for a tow build. Again the stage 1 is a great idea and I think it's a lot more performance than people give it credit for. The stage two, another big jump with the airflow mods and the stage 2.5 includes the injectors and turbos where you really get to fine tune the overall setup. And I will tell you right now, it would be a monster of a tow build. Now there are a few things for the stage three I wanna talk about. I wanted to include turbo injectors at stage two because I don't wanna drag the tow build series out too much. We're already really blurring the lines of street truck and tow build as is, I don't wanna do it any more than we're already gonna do, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this upload. We do have a stage three coming. There's a few more tricks up my sleeve I wanna talk about that include a bigger injector and some injectables for your 6.0 to help keep those temps down, guys. Stay tuned for that. Again, merch link down in the description. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next upload.